Go greetings. I am lies and I use she her. And I am scandal and I use they them. And let's play, play a game, game together. together. Yes. All right. In our last one, we established that we think she's dressed up as the world turtle. Yes. But like we wanted to mention going ethereal, otherworldly figure. What exactly is the MC thinking here? I. Because the thing is, you have to consider, this is done from first-person perspective. Mm -hmm. So, uh, your main character is the one who's sending you the information, so they're telling you what's important. And what they see. <clears throat> so, anyway. Behind her emerges an ethereal, otherworldly figure. She looks like she's floating as she glides into the room. And so that is Corazon's opinion. Yes. An ethereal, otherworldly figure. Ah, uh, yes. I, ah, uh, you're all paying attention to Nafisa, then, are you? I knew I should have arrived separately. Nadia! There you are. The two of them make their way to the center, stopping as they reach us. Nadia takes her mask off first, giving them both a tight smile. Hmm. That does not look like a tight smile. It looks like a barely there smile, but It's that's okay. okay. These are their smiles. Oh, right. I forgot. Sorry. Welcome to the party. You're late. Why would you say that? I don't know. It's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Oh, we. The sisters remove their masks in unison. Because the first thing you want to do at a masquerade is take your mask off. Yes. I assume this is a greeting thing. <clears throat> Natika leans forward to kiss both of Nadia's cheeks, while Nafisa simply looks around, observing. <clears throat> you know how it is, Nadia. Nafisa can't arrive anywhere on time. It takes her 900 years to get dressed. Uh -huh. You should have said the party started six months ago. Then she might have arrived yesterday. I, except for the fact that she wasn't, like, atrociously late at all. I mean, we don't know how many hours we've been at this. Based it's on true. how time works, this could be, like, eight hours into the party. But I'm also like, when did we say that the party was gonna start? Just today. Mm. On the other hand, remember, several of the other guests arrived days no, 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 I know that. But I'm saying, when did we say when the party was going to start? Oh, there was never a time. Yeah, that's why I'm today. like, yeah. you know, six months ago. So do we tell her then five months ago when Nadia was asleep? Do you see what my point yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. well, obviously this person doesn't know you were asleep. That's fine. Forget it. It's uh, fine. It's supposed to be a joke. Exaggerating the incompetence of this person, of the, of the older sibling. Of course. You're done. I see. Hmm. And your own tardiness, Natiqua. Hmm. What was that? Oh, is that Nava over there? If you'll excuse me. Natiqua smiles, bows gracefully, and then shows herself out of the conversation. I feel like I can't find her voice. Like, it's in my head I know what it is, but uh -huh. I can't get there again. Funny, I don't actually see Navra anywhere. Yes, bye. Nafisa stands serenely, simply looking about the room with a dreamy expression on her face. No one tries to approach her at all, either to greet her, or congratulate her, or pay honors or respect to her in any way, suggesting that everyone is more profoundly disrespectful to Nadia in contrast because of the presence of her older sister. Mm -hmm, yeah. Nobody does it. I wonder also if everyone here knows who she is. Mm. Nafisa, <clears throat> did you bring your turtle to the party? You have a turtle? Nafisa blinks, her intense gaze turning directly towards us now. The tiny turtle on top of her head turns its attention to us as well. Wait, it's a live turtle? Oh no. Wait, like you used to wear your chameleon on your head but it's her turtle? But also, like, people used to wear live birds on their hats. But how would the turtle hold on? I don't know! Also, turtles aren't really used to being stationary at all, and they don't like being up high. I say, well, turtles don't climb. They do not. The chameleons do climb, and they the do. chameleon would regularly put himself up there. I know. I liked my baby. He and and you would tie your hair up so he could hold on. Uh-huh, He was very good. And people would be like, is that a... Oh, God, it moved! Uh-huh, I'd be like, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, Whatever yes. you were going to ask, probably yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Very, very well socialized. <clears throat> yes. He asked to see Vesuvia, so I thought I'd show him. He says the city's aura is quite murky. I assume he's a magical familiar and can just sit up there not moving because he's a person. I'm so gr I'm like, I wish you guys would just explain familiars. And like, I know I've seen it in canon, at like, or at least like side canon, Twitter canon, but because they don't seem to say it like, have they actually, like, said it in the story that they're familiar? I'm pretty or they just sure, say companions? I am pretty sure that in Corazon's own head, um, they called the owl Nadia's familiar. 
Ah, but I'm not a hundred percent because I could just be. Hmm, but I think so. Okay, because I'm trying to remember. I just wish we had more context for what they were slash were about, rather than feeling like what I what I'm doing is everyone is vague. Got- a magical animal companion. Right, which is, I was going to say, you know, when everybody was reading horse girl books when they were really little, or like for a while, at least when I was growing up, and everybody had a magical animal companion. For me, with all the colors of the siblings, I really, and possibly a non-binary sister, if mm-hmm. you will, I was going to say, I'm really in a space of going, okay, what we've got is, if you pose them all together, is a bunch of Disney princesses with magical animal, co- animal companions. Yeah. But, you know, with more ethnic diversity. Except yes. for... I assume they're all the same ethnicity as each other, despite their diversity, um, visually, because they have the same parents as each other, I think? I think? I don't know. Mom I think we've only seen mom before. May have, had different, may have chosen different lovers for different kids. Yeah, we don't know that. Might have been how she got such a, di- such, such a diverse lot. Who knows? All right. Quite murky. Murky. Nafisa looks over at me. Her eyes... Oh, sorry. I have some wrong voice. Wrong it's okay. Voice. It's I'm like you're there. Now, Fiza looks over at me, her eyes wide as if just seeing me for the first time. It was amazing she missed me. Oh. He also told me about you, Corazon. Oh. She stares at me expectantly, like she is waiting for me to respond. Hmm. What, what did he say? Ask about... I think Corazon would be like, what did he say? Like, humor me. Uh-huh. Sure. Mm-hmm. What did he say? What did he say? He said you were a fountain of clarity in these muddied waters. He said to hit on you immediately. Do hit. I will hit. <laughs> will hit. With your lovely... Lo- I know, I know, I think actually uh, we didn't get to see the character on the, until then, but now that I've seen it, I'm like, oh, it's fucking Blue Diamond hair. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I say Blue Diamond didn't exist when this was made. But I, yes. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say the, the whole hair braided around together in front of you is a thing I've seen a few times. Mm-hmm. I say, but um, it's it's a very interesting choice. I think it's neat. Yes. But also, I think it would drive me insane. Uh, probably, I'd be like, I'm going to flip things all day. Also, <laughs> like, if I lean forward at all, my hair is in everything. I know! You really have to just be like, I'm the most contained character ever. However... What makes this fun, though, is you could be like, I can hide snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Uses it to hide snacks and num 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 num. Quietly just eating someone. Where did you get that? Get what? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your hair like that? Hides the sodas to go in the movie. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, honestly, I've seen people hide, hide stuff in scarves and things, but like, uh-huh. imagine you have like extensions on your hair or whatever, you just have a lot of hair, and you just take it, instead of wrapping it around like a bun form or something, you just wrap it around a full can of soda, you wrap it around a Chipotle burrito, you know, oh, you just God. style the food in your hair. No one's going to take it away if it's in your hair. They're not, if they can even tell what it is. <laughs> At all. God, I'd be like, dude, you'd have such fucking thick hair. Uh-huh. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Dang. Instantly jealous. Though. Just like, just like, Gets gets one of those like like little um reverse tiaras, uh-huh. but puts a little shelf on it so you can put food in it. You know what I just thought of? You have well, a little tiara and you stick little like French fries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if they're out in singles, they'll make your hair greasy. That's true. So that's but I good. thought it was so funny. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's it's really fine. Good. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Well, are you hitting on my date? Uh, right. I mean, Corazon is. Went right over my head. Quite important to me. Yes, as they should be. He looks deeply disappointed. They should oh. be so disappointed. <laughs> Together, I believe you shall do great things. The turtle looked away. I'm like both of you just look so disappointed. I ah oh yes, I'm completely mm. into Corazon. Ah oh, well, if they're not available, then I suppose. Yeah. I, I can just see that camera's mm. in, serenely, beautifully. I will hit on you, tell you you are an amazing bastion of clarity in this muddy shithole that is my sister's land. Oh, your sister. Oh, God, it's so good because I adore them. Oh. Um, oh, you're a thing. Well, shit. Because that's all I'm seeing in this whole face. Regret. The regret. She stares off into the distance, trailing into silence. A face of deep regret. <laughs> I actually think that it... She just stares off into the distance, you know. Like, just does, period. Yes. Well, is there something I can assist you with, Nafisa? Hmm. Nafisa sighs and then stares at Nadia once more, her energy growing serious. It wasn't serious before? Her chi! I can feel it building! 
Well, is she increasing her chi at me? Yes. You have felt it, haven't you, Nadia? The darkness growing in the horizon. Turtle gently tips their head sideways. Hmm. Turtle, boop. I have seen such worrying things of late. The challenges you want to face will not be easy. I assume you're magical based on this? Right. She reaches out and places her hand on Nadia's shoulder. Nadia freezes because no one touches and her. Exactly. Except for she doesn't. I came to support you. So you didn't come to attend my party. You came to support me in challenges that your powers perceived I would be engaging in. Right. Not that I don't want your support, but it does sound a little condescending, dear sister. I mean... Mm. I did not ask for that, Nafisa. I'm sure you're quite busy. Never too busy for my youngest sister. You have always gotten yourself into such fascinating situations. Let me not mention that time that you built a mud pit in the Great Hall. <laughs> and used it as a slip and slide. Why not? Fascinating. It looks away, again, serious and disappointed. Hmm. Hmm. Before Nadia can speak, she's interrupted by the ballroom doors bursting open. Because they've been closed again. Because they were closed. Again. For reasons. Ulian rushes into the ballroom, arms full of books. I don't know which one it is! Oh, oh. God! Then Chandra swoops in from a tall window, landing on Nadia's shoulder and chittering in her ear. Doors closed, windows are open. That's the way we like to roll. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> ah, sigh. Ah, I'm sorry. Nafisa, but it looks like I have some important business to attend to. As in, I wish to end every conversation I am ever in. Please, enjoy the party. And by that I mean, don't support me. Yeah, goodbye. I believe I shall. I heard talk of a bubble room. I'm also like you have no attendance. You have a giant retinue that precedes you, but you have no one that stands with or near you. Of course not. I am an island. Because the thing is, is that in order to mention them, that would require more words. And it would require Corazon to see or notice that she is flanked by somebody or something. Which also then, at this point, really does kind of make Corazon seem like an ass. Like, more of an ass of going, I've actually started to literally ignore everybody who's lower than a certain station. I've also, once mentioning that you were an ethereal creature, never described anything about you physically ever again. Nope, not even... Uh, not even the adorable turtle on your head. But you we, described it, but we don't take note of it or make eye contact with it. God, if I, if that was nerd, nerd would be like, I will look at the turtle. I will make eye contact with the turtle. I will slowly see if I can get the turtle to follow me with its head while, uh -huh. you know, while everyone else is talking. <laughs> like, ooh, I'm Because again, to... for the most part, you're not really included much in these conversations, so why not? Why not? Though I imagine even in Nerd's route, this would still be a disaster. Oh, it'd be so bad, but also uh... I'm just like, me, I, as myself. Okay, I don't know anything about your turtle. Can I hold them? Right? Like, go to the crown princess of whatever and their magical head turtle. Can I hold your baby? I mean, especially if you were there and you're going, hi, I'm supposed to be a part of this. And again, they haven't given us any background information. There has been no, basically, world building dump as to what familiars are. So the concept of going, can I hold your whatever the fuck it is, your would pet. make total sense to me. Because you'd be like, this has no sacred meaning to me. Because mm -hmm. you just go, it's a familiar. Okay, what does that mean? But also, no one said familiar. It's just your turtle. Your turtle. Can I hold your turtle? Right? Yeah. Like, even the thing with, with uh, uh, Chandra, I was really like, I would have held the bird. I would have petted the bird. Always pet the bird. But because also, though, at the same time, they're like, we don't really describe what any of this stuff is slash means. Mm -hmm. And even your main character is literally lacking in any amount of, like, exposition about it at all. They're like... I don't care, it's just a thing. Well, and as far as we can tell, they treat Faust, who has been amazingly absent in this route, sadly. I know. And was much more present in Julian's route. I know. I say, um, as basically a household pet? Yeah, kind of. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Like it's just a family pet. Yeah, except very talkative. Honestly, though, I would be very sad. I'd be like, look, I've lived with that snake my entire life, all three years of my life. I haven't seen them in the last week. What the hell? Right? On the other hand, I get the impression that they always leave with Astro when he goes, mm -hmm. so there's that. Yeah. But still. 
Nadia grabs my hand and Julian's elbow and drags us both out of the box. Okay, I'm just literally seeing that Disney princess thing where you grab one person, grab the other, you sort of crouch down, and you just drag them both walking backwards. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye. <laughs> the moment we get to a relatively uncrowded hallway, why not just go to a room? Not every room is open. Never mind. It's okay. Nadia turns to Julian. Every room is open. People are even touring her bedroom and looking at the giant bathroom with pe- the pedals. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Are those Astra's books? Are those all of Astra's books? The entirety of his whole collection. Do those ones belong to him? You didn't get books that belonged to someone else, did you? Corazon going like, books are expensive. That's right. This is every book Astra owns. Every book. Actually, that would make a lot of sense. That would be amazing. I love it. All the, okay, so as other people have pointed out in a fantastical situation, uh, fantasy is hilarious about books and bookbinding because for the most part, they're like, you wouldn't have this much much access to basically being a, like writing materials slash things that you could like have bound. Like, that's just not how that... Not everyone knew how to bind books. A lot of books, I say in quotes back in the day, were or actually scrolls, scrolls or they or were tablets, like tablets and things like that. Like actually like bound printed matter as they show in the library was a relatively new thing suggesting the technology is much further advanced than yes. some of the other pieces of this would suggest right i say um on the other hand since we don't know what any of the carriages or carts or other methods of mo- locomotion look like we don't know what their technology level really is it seems- we also haven't really seen the devices or objects or things that people talk about there's a grand clock there's an amazing door but we haven't seen them really they're just described and if they're ordinary things that nadia can make even if they're stunning craftsmen Chip that that doesn't then those are normal stuff. Also, well, medical also like, engineers, machines, elevators, things. Right. That was also like though it depends. Are we talking about like is this water propelled like water clocks because those were really pre- prevalent? I think if I remember correctly, like you had steam clocks, you had clockwork. Clock- Ge- gears were one of the most common things ever because winding something with a spring and letting it run down was very very easy technology. Yeah. Um. Or just like a uh, very very basic tech mm. was literally having candles that you filled into a mold and you said this was an hour, this was an hour, and this was an hour and then you just light it and keep time. and so you just kept lighting candles so you'd have people who'd literally wander around and who would keep candles with them and they would swap candles when the hour basically was up mm. like i said are those astra's books uh, they are yeah uh, uh, there were a few that look similar so i just grabbed them all i similar to what similar to what to how do you know which one to grab i think that's a problem i didn't know because you know i have to come back instantly you threaten to kill me it's true. Like, very much. But also, like, that is all of Astro's books, then. Well, better safe than sorry, I suppose. Chandra says the ritual is ready. Come. Didn't, didn't, didn't Chandra go with Julian? Yes, Chandra went with Julian, and then showed back up with Julian just now, but also has told Nadia the ritual is ready just now. Chandra doesn't need to check on it, or send Julian back to the palace, flew ahead, checked on it, and then flew in at the same time as him at the ballroom. We don't know that he travels quickly. Okay. I just... Also, I'm like, we have completely, like, forgotten the fact that it took us over eight hours to get to the palace. To walk to the... It's okay. You know what I love, though? Mm -hmm. I just love the fact that this looks like cat ears with one eyeball. And the whole thing, you could just, like, make it look like a simplified cat motif. Uh Uh-huh. It's very cute. It's It's just... It's a fantasy cat with one eye. We head straight to the Contemplation Tower. When we enter, Asura and Muriel are already waiting. I love that Julian doesn't think anything about walking straight into Nadia's bedroom and through a hidden door and up the tower or anything. It's okay. He's a nun character here. It's all right. They've set up an elaborate circle in the middle of the room, clearing away all of the stray pillows. Remember before they described pillows? It's a very comfy place, despite all the dampness. I know. I'm like, ooh, those pillows are moldy. pillows. It never gets... Maybe it never, ever gets warm enough here to... Steam the pillows. That he, doesn't sound realistic. Heat we're rises, on, we're but on, the tower is nice and cold. I mean, unless like, uh, depending on where we are oh. geologically, like on a oh, what, on a so globe? the contemplation tower is way the fuck up in the air, right? And yeah. the tower and the castle's really, really tall, right? Yeah. I need to know how they pump the water up there. Yeah. Is that also a magical engineer thing? Because nerd is like, I could do it. I that that, that would be great. It's like also a very good. Excellent observation. I didn't think that about about that at all. How did you get the water up here and then start pumping it through fountains? I assume uh, it's recycling, and if not, does it come up through something in the foundation? And do you know what you have to do to like rocks to run water through them? I mean, you need pipes. Uh-huh. You have to have good, robust 
pipes to do this. Because otherwise it leaks and it destroys your entire castle. Also then, how? what's your system like for repairing it? One. And two, I really hope it's just magical engineering, because good god, that's going to be a huge pain in the ass to like disassemble tower mm. in order to redo pipes. Tears out the entire, like, one entire wall of a tower, of a, you know, the tower on the castle to put <sighs> pipes in. It's that sounds fine. like a nightmare architecturally. All right. This, Astra, uh, we have a small leak in our pipe. Do you think maybe you could just fix it magically so we don't have to rebuild half the castle? Really? I, do I... Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Goes and hires a magical engineer himself. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Clearing away all the stray pillows. Chandra flies into the room after us, landing lightly on Muriel's shoulder and nibbling gently at his hair. Yum, 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 yum. Mm, tasty. Yum, 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 yum. You clean, 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 clean. <laughs> <laughs> Olga, you brought the books. Good. Asra plucks the books out of Julian's hands, then tosses a few to the side and settles down with two illuminated man manuscripts. Oh, look, you brought like 15 books. Give me these two. You know what I'm entertained by? This huh. is the first time Asra and Julian have actually seen each other on this route, and there's no conversation at all. Nope. No interaction. I mean, kind. that could be literally an indicator of that they're avoiding the shit out of each other, you know, kind of things. So, and like, I literally won't say anything. I won't mm. be like, here, let me say hi. Astra stood in the square and watched Julian die. Excellent. They watched just... the castle. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, be a dear and stand guard outside the tower entrance, would you? Because you were involved in stuff last time, but not this time, I mm. guess. I... Why is Muriel here? Why isn't Muriel standing guard? Actually, speaking of somebody that people would see and that they would insult. Dr. Julian, do you know how to fight? She's not a, It's okay. It's okay. She doesn't need to ask questions. She doesn't <laughs> need to assess people's skills. When I or... say stand guard, I hope you know what I mean. Yes. Looks at someone you've barely spoken to at all, who, and, and, and you don't remember what your relationship was. I'm going to tell you a specific term. I don't. You won't know whether it's to alert us or do something about it, but go do that. Uh, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Would you? Establishing parameters. This doesn't happen here. William stops staring nervously at the magic circle, the relief clearly evident on his face. Okay. Oh, so there's a magic circle on the floor. Nice to know. Good. Oh, ah, oh, you may stand out there where the magic isn't happening. I think I can do that. Bye! Remember not to go to the party or get drunk while you're standing there. Hmm? What? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Already pouring <laughs> Pulls a flask out and starts guzzling. What? He's gone before anyone can even reply. Asra gives Nadia a knowing smile and then turns to turns one of the books towards her, open to a page with gilded illustrations. Expensive books. Very fucking expensive books. Jesus Christ. Good job, Asra. This... Your your dad is very bougie in his books. <sighs> I know. This is the magic spell. There are some instructions here for those who cross over. These that seeks to cross between realms, thy power shall be unbound. Unbound? Ugh. Well, I suppose if it wasn't cryptic and ominous, everyone would do it. I want her to look more sassy when she says that. Uh -huh. If it wasn't cryptic and, onom and ominous, everyone would do it. Cryptic and anonymous. And anonymous. <laughs> you know, um, everybody. what happens in the ether stays Days in the ether. In the ether. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the spell is ready. If we're doing this, we do it now. You know magic? Apparently. Holy Jiminy Cricket. Apparently, you, you and Astra do magic together, casually. While Astra is busy warding you from everything in the world, you also help him with his spells. Holy fuck! I would have never pegged, like, Muriel for that at all! You would have because never he... pegged Muriel? I would have never pegged Muriel. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry. I'm just like, based on everything know. that I've seen so far, I'm like, holy shit! You yeah. seem way too fucking nervous, and also, like, just everything makes you uncomfortable. Like, Astra has to force his way into your experience. Apparently, doing complex magical spells in a private space with a bunch of people he doesn't like is fine. Uh, yeah, that's right, like, what? Or a couple people he doesn't um, like. Nadia looks really concerned. That's weird. <laughs> Nadia looks really concerned. She reaches out and takes my hand, and she's shaking a little. The fact that he's Why going to do... Why did this sentence just get really casual? The fact that he's going to do the magic. The fact that it's implied that he is doing the magic. I'm really uncomfortable with this. Asra, aren't you the magician here? Asra, I thought you were doing the spell. Gently uses her other hand and, and grips at Asra's sleeve. Asra, Muriel's not casting the spell, is he? What? I... You're doing the spell, right? What? This I... ominous and, you know, um, uncomfortable thing? 
not him, is it? Why not? What's wrong? Muriel clearly knows magic. Oh, God. We're gonna die. We're gonna die. As for shoots, Muriel, a look. A look. We can wait a little bit. Oh, we can wait a bit. If you need to take a little time to prepare, you can. Whatever you need. Muriel, I want this done as soon as possible. Asra, let them breathe for 50 seconds. 15 seconds. Two seconds. Just for his own. sit. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can get it done. Why are we breathing? Nadia squeezes my hand a little tighter. It seems like she's really worried. I'm... Ah! <laughs> I'm actually a little bit... Worried. It seems like she's worried because she says so. I right. What? What's? What's concerning Why you, did? Honey? Why suddenly did? Give us a minute of loan. You're gonna chase them out of the tower. I. What? The thing is, is you can't say I'm ready for Nadia. You can't. You can't. And saying I'm ready doesn't say Nadia's ready. We have to caretake for Nadia. It honestly, based on how nervous she is, I don't think Corazon would want to go into this thing with her. I think it would be give us a minute alone so I can calm her the fuck down. God damn it! Tell me I'm wrong. Because I mean, the thing is, it's like if she's that's why I said gripping cause... Corazon's hand and being like, mm, I think I... Corazon would be like, we should not do magic in this state. God damn it! God damn it! So this episode might end up being much longer. Or, it's, I think, honestly, it should be a tiny bit short. Just, I would say, uh, because... Or, or I guess we can make it... it might, if, it's, if it's only 100 coins, then it might only be like a 5 or 10 minute scene. Should we just it do it? Let's just do it. I mean, it. the thing is, is, we're going to have to do it, but we have to come back because we have to find out where it ends. All right, hold on, everybody. Give us so hang half on. a second. All right, so we're, we, we think we're prepared. So for anyone who hasn't done a premium scene with us, um, we are about to enter cover-up territory. Um, where, where there will be fabulous, um, non-sanctioned uh, premium art. Yes. And um, we will we will ad-lib the scene for you as per the agreement with Nick Hydra. Yes. And so, give us a minute alone. Here we go. All right. So we have this first line, give us a minute alone. All right. And then, um, Asra explains that the, the two of them who are not us... Don't worry. We will be out there... And then, um, if you need anything, and when you're done, just give us a holler. D just make just it, let it, it, let it be known. Let it be known. So, and so then, it just then describes, of course... The two of them exiting the space, yep. led by Asra. Yes. Because the, the tall boy is just nervous about doing anything. Yeah, pretty much. Then, Nadia, who is all a blush all of a sudden, rather than the incredible nervousness that was described... Explains. I mean, she could be blushing out of frustration. It's true. Yeah, like it's true. That frustrated guy. She could guy, just be like, like, we, like the, all these things that we've accomplished. I just don't understand because she, you know, what happened earlier that uh, herself and Corazon have done a lot of stuff together, and such as even faced earlier, down just the big goat man today with a giant soft goat. Yeah, giant, giant soft saucy goat. A soft. Silky eared goat. Yes. Him. I am the devil. You he a soft boy with big beautiful horns and silky trying to describe him to someone in a crowd. Right. <laughs> mm. Um and then apparently Nadia is taking uh your appendage. Your your appendage with your fingers on the end. Mm -hmm. Uh and clasps your 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 uh, palm and to up to her, her head. To uh, to her cheek. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. To the side of her head. Yeah. Um and and you know, uh, the, her eyelids come down. Uh-huh, and then she just, like, leans into that. Yes. Uh-huh. And then, Nadia says that she does not understand why in this moment, in her peaceful, beautiful space, even if we, they have faced down the devil together... Yep, and we've done all the things we've done, including, you know, uh, point a sword at Lucio. Why am I scared now? Yes. She wants to know. Uh, oh, I guess actually... Uh, no, no, that happened. We do it again. I guess apparently we continue doing it again. So, of, so of putting the palm to the cheek. I was going to say, there's a, there's a level of like... But, it's, but it's... I will grab your whole, whole face. Contain experience. it between both of my, 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 my palms. Uh-huh. And just... Flu -lu -lu -lu. Yep. And, and then, um... A, like, for apparently this main character, say, really aggressively, wants to just straddle Nadia. Yes. <laughs> I say, Corazon doesn't do that. No. But that this, this character is like, I will get on top of you. Like, almost just 
scrambling directly onto her legs. Honestly, the, the straddling it's was very, a good description. So, yes. but, but Corazon, however, not uh, just just looks at Nadia pointedly yes. while while holding holding on to her. Apparently, uh, then this this MC is just so deeply concerned that they just wish to smooch her to death in order to make her uh, feel make better. Her feel better yep. like, and, and just say over and over again that it's going to be okay. It's like, going to be okay. This MC is just like, I will kiss you until you forget about the whole world. However, it doesn't happen. I say, I imagine Corazon would begin to explain that Nadia is competent yeah. and capable and can handle this, but also that it is okay to be afeard of the unknown. Yes. You know, but going, that is why you have me. Yes. Your fear is not unreasonable nor unacceptable, and but you also need to have confidence. Yes. Uh, then, but they, do, but like I said, so this MC just sort of acknowledges that they don't know everything that's going to happen, so they are afraid to state that it seems they're afraid to tell Nadia that all of it will be good because they don't know for sure. So they're like, okay, but you know, the thing that I I might be able to tell you is this specific thing. Mm-hmm. And then so basically, your MC is like, you know what, Nadia. You need to remember, together we will be. I uh, together. It, it, what you need to remember is that I'm gonna be there too. Yeah. That Corazon's like, I'll be there too. Like that moment. That's actually what this MC says, but a little bit differently. Yes. All right. And then Nadia's very surprised. Like, you'll be there as well <gasps> with me. You and me will be as, there as what? As us sharing a space. Wait, we'll be in us. Are we in us? Are we in us? Yes. Yeah, she wants to know if we're in us. And, uh, then, and she, then she's like, contemplative. So much time that I was facing specifically the types of tests I'm facing now by myself. <laughs> and I've done it for such a great length of time. I, I just, she just doesn't know what to do if she has help or companionship. I didn't know she's been facing these specific types of trials for a great length of time by herself, but she is describing that now. Right. And then she, she is now confessing to going, I had to, a hard time for so long, and I wasn't aware of it. Yep, it was Such... super, and it was real difficult oh, for her. And, oh, and she, she cries. cries. She actually crying. Oh, she cried. And and then she she cries when she she expresses that after this great length of trial and, and being challenge alone. and being overwhelmed and overburdened, even as she was unaware of it, that she then met Corazon. Yeah, that, that she, she then like, came into the acquaintance of. Your main character. She just, she she was then became acquainted with the main MC. Yep, and it's still talking about the fact that, that how she's crying. That saline runs down the side of uh-huh. her face. Yep, and of course that she, she cleans her face, you know, uh, as like she's... As she trembles. Yeah, she trembles. Uh, and then of course, you know, she, she leans into us and does the head bonk. Yep, there's you know, a head, gentle head, bonk. head bonks. Um, and then... Just like a Pokemon with their trainer, yeah. your breathing Breath. aligns. Your, your breathing becomes in sync. In sync, that one. And yeah. so, so together you do the deep breaths and you do them in exactly the same time until somehow the actual physical forms that you're inhabiting become the same. They, they reflect each other. Yes. Um, and then also at the same time, it causes your internal space to to uh, uh, be organized, be organized, and empty of clutter. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. absolutely. And then, while you have that, your heads gently together, and you are inhaling and exhaling as one, and your 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 um, pulse is rhythmic with each other. Nadia says that all of the the um, sunrises and sunsets that she is with the MC is just such a present that she never expected to get. Yes, at all, and that she is deeply. She expresses happy. the light, just joyful. Sorry, she's so joyful in this moment, as things are difficult and challenging. That being able to have Corazon in her presence uh-huh. just empowers her to be capable of all things. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then she apologizes. She does. And because she, she expects, you know, she's like, you know, I, I, I really feel like I should know better who I am. I should be more contained, you know. She says, because I am royalty. Yep. I've because specifically, I have count specifically my position. The lady count experience. And, and I should, people in my position never get scared. Yeah, of course not. Mm-hmm. Or they don't. They never express the shivers. Mm-hmm. They don't express emotions that are anything but leaderly. And the, Ever. the main character just, you know... Uh, you know, moves their head like in in a negative fashion. You know, and then continues to kiss her, and then 
you know, just just a soft, just just makes like a a soft, encouraging expression. Yes. However, I think Corazon at this point would be like, it yeah. is okay to feel the fear. It is also okay to express the fear, though I'm not going to tell you how you should count us. Yes. I, I won't tell you how to count us properly. Even though, honestly, again, they're like, I had lots of expectations and I'm still, I'm still... A little reeling. Out. Yeah, still still doing this reeling thing. Constantly. And just being like, and I think at this point, Corazon really would just be like, you are able to do this. And as a team, we will succeed so long as you stay calm and also do not bottle your emotions. Yes. And then, of course, the, the, the you know, Corazon is just like, it's okay to to express yourself. It's express yourself. Express, is it, it's okay. Express yourself. That is it. And then Nadia explains again that going no. What she I is meant to, to do be. is be toxic masculine. I mean, um, toxic stoicism. Toxic stoicism. That she is not meant to express anything negative because if she does, she's supposed to she's be not taking care the of the reliable people. one, the thing in the middle of the stream when all the water is pounding uh, around. She's it. an island. She is an island. She's meant to be an island. And, and she's, she's not... also supposed to be there for the survivors as well. So she will care for them uh, when they fall out of the plane. She's the one that takes care of everyone else. She's meant to be a parachute. And then, She's of course, to be a guard. The, main, the main character is a little bit like, well, aren't I also supposed to do that? Like, can't I do that for her? Like, that sounds, that sounds reasonable to if me. If she is taking care of everyone, who will take care of the taker, the right. caretakers? Right, as a who watches Who takes the care of the caretakers? <laughs> right. Yeah. And then also acknowledges, at least based on their perception, that Nadia got so much going on. Dang, she, like, she's got the whole world. And I feel like Corazon is going, I am here to assist you in being the kind of powerful you need to be. Yes. And, Which is actually different than what this main character is mm, going on and about. And I can help you be that if you will let me. And then still question to themselves, going, why is this bad that, that we, we would even try to to uh, take some of the pain and put it on ourselves? So there really is going, is it okay to um, uh, shoulder some of the burden that Nadia perceives to carry? Mm -hmm. And it really is like a, but but is that all right? Corazon would not have this problem. Corazon yeah, would Corazon go, I am hired to That's show, what to I'm doing, and that's what this. I wanted to do. The Corazon whole job like, is to carry some of the burden so you can do better. Uh huh. And then you get an option to either say, no, do not spend your time thinking about um, uh, MC, or uh, it is me that will keep you safe. Yes, yes, uh, I'll do it as well. I'll also put myself on the line yes. kind of thing, basically. But the and thing so is, think... is, with Corazon, Corazon's really just going to be like, I'm please, fine. remove me from your thoughts. Yes. Do that... not spend your energy to care for me. Please. Please. Because, oh my God. And also, I am already very capable, and this is why Astra and I don't get along, okay? Because Astra wanted to caretake for me, and yes. I am so, that is so last year. Yeah, not happening. So, snap, snap, so uh, last year. So last year. All right. Uh, so, Nadia so, is surprised, actually, and, and, and sort of uh, uh, like just, withdraws from us a little bit to laugh. To, to, she just kind of has that startled, like, uh -huh. bark of a giggle, uh, be, where she's like, I didn't expect you to say that at all. And then she just exclaims like, oh, with my. words, like, really? Uh-huh. Wow. And then um, she apparently relaxes completely, even when with the breathing and the clearing of her mind and everything, she hadn't um, relaxed, relaxed completely. But now her body, or like her whole physical space fully relaxes, and uh, she breathes out, making a gentle sound, and then lays, that just just leans she over. She must come back and she and goes. And bogs against bogs shoulder against instead of forehead. Yes. So against the side of your torso. I we'll guess. do that. And she, she expresses that... You know what? One she more should time, stop. She should stop talking down on herself. She, she should stop. No, no. She, she should stop babying you, sort of thing of like stop oh, doubting your sorry. experience. She should stop thinking that you aren't capable of taking care of yourself. Yeah. She should stop thinking that you actually need caretaking. Uh huh. And, and she's also like, you know, she's also happy nice about it though. Not to actually have to consider that. She she, she kind but of goes, even though she literally cannot stop doing it. <laughs> I say that there is this level of going. I I need to quit being your mom uh -huh. and trying to help you through everything. And also, I'm kind of really glad that you that I don't need to be. Yeah. Like that's that's where that is. And then she expresses gratitude straight to Corazon. And that she just really needed to express uh, is saying that she really just 
had to express her feelings. Yeah. And that she feels she's better. Like, I, I'm, I really think I was just having a moment and I wanted to get all of that. And she's, she's realizing again that if instead of bottling up all her emotions, she lets them out, right. it makes her feel better. She's trying to let go of her toxic stoicism. Yes, she really is. So then she she gets rearranges up. her spine. She she gets, untrips herself. She untrips herself. Yes, yes. and she do a Mormon smooch. Uh -huh. And then uh, she she stands up. She calls out to both the people who are waiting outside for and us. And she invites our companions back to the room. And uh, and and good Astra inquires. If if the lady is is quite composed, yes. I uh, after after his friend and Nadia assures him that she is just fine and that while she didn't check in with Corazon at all, both of you are completely prepared to do this. Or at least she's 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 fairly certain. She thinks so. Yes, she thinks so. And I believe yes. that. Uh, no, not quite yet. No, no, okay. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Nadia... Uh, After standing right uh, up, she, she sits again. back down again. <laughs> um, and then, of course, everybody comes back in. Yep. All right, here we go. Oh, and then here we are. All right, so if anything happens, just reach out with your magic and switch with your body. You'll snap back to it. All right. I but, but guys... Well, you know what? We're going to have to snap back in the next one. Yes. Okay, yeah. that was fascinating. I hope you had fun. It really was just a moment of, like... I'm really unsure, and then going, you don't need to be unsure, and her going, let me vomit all my emotions out, and us going, that's okay, I can take care of myself, and you can do that. Yeah, like, please. And then her going, you know, I feel better when I express myself. Like, that That was the scene. Yeah, that was basically it. Uh -huh. And I... it was also, like, a bunch of little smooches written in. Yeah. Lo lo which little... which Corazon is not not super, like, like affection smoochy in spontaneous moments. Yeah, especially when a lot of it is about, like, Caretaking. I think, unfortunately, Corazon doesn't know how to do caretaking Corazon's and also be casually affectionate. At sexy smooches, at yes. hot, spicy smooches, but at like, I am motivated smooches, but not like, please feel better. Oh, I like you. You you are very cute and sweet. And you know what? Be encouraged. Ni moi. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, no. that's not that one. Anyway, okay. so uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos. It actually does a lot for us in regards to the YouTube algorithm. Please also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi and our Patreon and our Twitch. We have some links in the description down below, and we would love to see you at any of those locations. And I, I have been Scandal. And I, I have been Lies. And, and it was great playing with you. you. Bye! Bye.